Nuclear power. What image comes to your mind when I say those two words? Chances are, if you're like the majority of Americans, it's probably not a good thing. And this doesn't surprise me, because after all, for decades, environmentalists have bombarded us with messages that nuclear power is dangerous. In fact, at this very moment, the Sierra Club's website states that nuclear power is a uniquely dangerous energy technology for humanity. Uniquely dangerous. That's a pretty heavy claim against something that produces 20% of our nation's electricity. And, well, if nuclear power is in fact this existential threat to our lives, well, I'll be the first to say, hey, let's get rid of it. That's, we don't want to have this threat. But is it really this unique threat to our lives? How do we evaluate that claim? Well, fortunately, it's pretty simple. Safety is relative. One way is to compare the activity to something else. So, car, driving a car is more dangerous than flying in an airplane. And we know this because we have lots of data to show that more people die in car accidents every year than they do falling out of the sky. So, I have a few examples of fairly mundane things in our daily lives, and we'll compare nuclear power to those things, and evaluate how dangerous it really is. So we'll start with a little story. Back in 2013, I was counter-protesting the Keystone XL Pipeline rally in Washington, D.C. And it was an educational counter-protest. And your first question may be, Tom, why is a nuclear engineer counter-protesting an anti-fossil fuel rally? Well, the answer is that I was there doing interviews and talking with people uh, about nuclear power uh, who were there to protest nuclear power. So I had this engaging conversation with a very uh, fine young gentleman who uh, kindly informed me, and I'll paraphrase because there's explicit content, that solar panels, unlike nuclear, when a solar panel breaks, it's called a sun spill. And do you know what a sun spill is? It's a sunny day. Ha, 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 check me, nuclear power. So I've been thinking about it for a while. Recently, I was like, oh, is that really true? And kind of like, you know, my great comebacks to bullies in high school that I think of 10 years later after graduating, <laughs> I realized that a sunny day is actually up to 9,400 people dying of melanoma skin cancer every year. Now, the sun is not some, you know, we take it for granted every day unless it's a night of whole winter day. <laughs> and in fact, a lot of these people who get melanoma skin cancer, chances are they got it by laying out on the beach and bathing themselves in the radiation of the giant thermonuclear fireball in the sky. <laughs> Incidentally, we can't control that. And, well, from what I can tell, that's a very painful form of skin er, cancer. Well, speaking of sun, the sun, uh, a couple of years ago, my fiancé and I booked a, a beachside resort for a couple of days, or a room at one, and uh, it was my birthday, we wanted to get out of Idaho, and we had some friends over on the East Coast that we wanted to visit. And we thought we'd be really cheeky. And we, in the special request box, requested that they build us a pillow fort, because why not? And, interestingly enough, they obliged. <laughs> it was one fine pillow fort. But behind that veneer of joy and smiles, I was fearing for my life. And why was that? Well, you, as you can see, the roof of my pillow fort was made of a bedsheet. And we all know bedsheets are an ex existential threat to our lives, right? Well, in fact, 855 infants in 2013 died from bedsheets, pillows, or crib bars. So this ubiquitous thing in our daily lives is a non-zero threat. And in fact, most new mothers are warned specifically about putting things in their cribs with their infants. Well, we're at TEDx Idaho Falls. We came to learn some cool ideas that uplift us, so infant mortality probably isn't one of them. So let's go on to move on to bringing those bundles of joy into the world, something happy. Well, I'm going to be a dad in June. And, <laughs> 
Thank you. First time. And I'm super excited, of course. But, you know, in the back of my mind, I know that historically, childbirth was a very risky prospect for most women. Fortunately, today, it's at the lowest point in terms of riskiness that it has ever been. But people still take out life insurance policies when they're having a kid. And in fact, in today's world, in the United States, 700 women still die from childbirth every year. It's tragic. But this is something that most women will go through once, if not many more times, in their lives. This is not a terribly uncommon thing. Well, before we have to worry about the risks of bringing the bundles of joy into the world, you got to make them. And in case you're wondering, I'm showing affection to a nuclear fuel assembly. There's several hundred of those in the reactor core. That's what powers them. Well, it turns out that working on making a baby isn't necessarily a risk-free activity, STDs aside. According to the American Heart Association, over 350,000 people have sudden cardiac arrest each year outside of hospitals. And according to a peer-reviewed article I found in the Postdoctorate Medical Journal, over 2,000 of those cardiac arrests happen during, or at least an hour after, coitus. <laughs> and if you do a little bit of Googling and Wikipedia searching after the talks, um, you can actually find a very intriguing list of very famous people who have expired at the peak of physical congress. <laughs> Actors, vice presidents, even two popes. Although, <laughs> granted, one of them, it's disputed. Um, they say that the husband of the woman the pope was sleeping with jealously threw him out of the window. And that's called defenestration, by the way. But back to, back to sex, um, Edward Teller, a famous uh, nuclear scientist in the early days of nuclear technology, had a very apt quote about the natural amounts of radiation present in our body. And his famous quote goes, in sleeping with a woman, one receives slightly less radioactivity than from a nuclear reactor. But to sleep with two women is very, very dangerous. <laughs> So now that I covered a couple of non-unique, fairly common things in our lives, let's compare the supposedly uniquely dangerous energy technology. The fact of the matter is, since 1957, when the shipping port atomic power station first went online and ushered in commercial nuclear power in the United States, exactly zero people have died from the nuclear in nuclear power. And I'll say that one more time in case you thought I stuttered. Since 1957, not one single American has died from the nuclear in nuclear power. So, one thing I want to leave with you guys before uh, my time is up. This perception that nuclear power is this unique danger to our lives has real-world consequences. You may all be familiar with MRIs magnetic resonance imaging devices. But that's not what they're actually called. They're called nuclear magnetic resonance imaging devices. Back in the day, doctors dropped the N-word because they were legitimately afraid that people would forego the technique, or the diagnostic imaging technique, out of fear of being associated with nuclear. So if you ever hear that nuclear power is really dangerous, just let them know the facts, and I hope you've come to the same conclusions I have about the safety of nuclear power. Thank you. And one, th one last thing. On your drive home tonight, have a safe drive home. <laughs>